So last week we've had our second time breakout sessions and I think it went really well and I'm planning, you know, to organize those breakout sessions now every six to eight weeks. And uh, as I said before, you know, the, the aim of those meetings uh, is to build a support system for the overcoming of the cultural conditioned massive distrust in our direct sensorial experience. Our Western cultural narratives overemphasize the abstract realm which you know, is said to be hidden behind or beyond what we can directly experience with our senses. So it's basically you know, not visible to the naked eye and we need experts and we need very complex and very expensive technology in order to know what's happening. And I think this is not really the truth. There's one level, you know, which is hidden from the naked eye, but that's not necessarily what we need right now to work on. Because we have been doing this, you know, for a very long time and we have lost connection. We have lost connection with what the planet needs. Even we have all of these complicated machines, you know, which can look very far and can look very deep into very small stuff. And still we are not seeing what's right in front of our eyes when we go out into the biosphere and we see that it is collapsing. So, you know, those frameworks, they are simply too limited. And the you know short the short circuit the relationship between the human organism and its own science. So we are just completely inside of a hall of mirrors, and we don't really you know we don't really feel uh, a sense of urgency appropriate to the situation. Because if we would, things would move along much quicker. But we are again constantly sidetracked into this and into that. And there is not enough provisions made for our sensory reciprocity between our own organisms, our own bodies and the land. It's a closed loop. And it's increasingly you know, becoming more disconnected and, and kind of yeah, a hall of mirrors because it cuts us off from a direct relationship with the biosphere and the needs of the biosphere, including our own needs, you know, because of course we are not separate from the biosphere. We are the biosphere. We are the land. Because the senses are the primary way how the earth is informing us, how the earth is informing our souls and also how the earth can guide our actions. Because we are part and parcel of the earth, we have emerged out of her. And, you know, when we die, we go back into her. And we actually are always inside of her because, you know, the atmosphere stretches for a few miles. So we are inside of the biosphere. Like an earthworm, you know, is inside of the earth, of the biosphere, and we are also inside of it, but we are not in the earth. We are in the oxygen and all of those substances we need for survival. They are not visible and therefore they are easily, you know, easy forgotten. But try to not breathe for three minutes and you know there is something there that's not a void. Even it looks void, you know, to our eyes. And mindfulness, we can say, you know, is nothing else but infusion of awareness into every sense perception. That's what mindfulness is. 
infusion of awareness into the perception on the six senses. And we have been, you know, hijacked into overemphasizing the mind sense. But as I have said a few times, you know, according to the Buddhist uh, framework, thoughts are just one sense organ. The mind, the thinking mind thinks, the nose smells, the ears hear, the eyes see, the body, you know, knows about touching and uh, no smells, the tongue, the tongue tastes. So, you know, the senses are all actually just senses and the mind, the thinking mind isn't the boss of all of those senses. The thinking mind should actually serve and it's the heart, you know, the chitta, which is receiving and participating in awareness. So only as we come closer to our senses and if we begin to trust them again, you know, the nuanced intelligence of our sensing bodies, do we begin to notice and to respond to the subtle data flow of the planet, of the land, you know, which comes into us. It's like, it's called information because it enters our form and through that we'll know what to do. But if we rely on very heavy machinery and technology and experts to tell us what's going on, then we are cut off. We are cut off from the direct information which comes to us from relationship with the biosphere. And our bodies are made for that, you know, because they are the biosphere. They are not separate from the biosphere. They are like plugins into the intelligence of the biosphere. And we need to, you know, basically re-attune because we have lost that capacity when we once were living, you know, in the same way as some of the indigenous people still live today, we all had that capacity, but then we got trained out of it through abstract thinking and, you know, the education which is uh, passed on at this time. And that's also a good thing, but it needs to be grounded in this more archaic capacity of the human body to really be in relationship with the planet, with the land where the body lives. And through that, knowing what's needed. And that's what we'd like to re-encourage again. And those guided meditations, which I share with you on the Wednesdays, they are designed to reawaken that archaic knowing, which is deep, deep down in our bodies, in our DNA, because we are all mammalian uh, humans. We have mammalian bodies, which are part and parcel of the biosphere they have emerged out of the biosphere through the mediation of a mother and they are riding animals for consciousness and this is what the journey is you know if we are born as a human being at this time then we have to open up to what the planet is telling us because the planet is us So as this regime of self-reference begins to break down, the shapes around us become alive again. And there's a, a different depth becomes available, a different dimension to what we already know opens up. And that's you know what I can experience as I'm doing these practices now, you know, over about a good year or more, when I go into the forest, I see with much more depth and I feel that these trees and that these plants are my relatives on a level which I can 
not really speak about. Maybe poetry could, ex you know, could explain it, but it doesn't need to be explained because we can all participate in it. Just do these practices, these practices or other practices which are designed for that, and then just go out and check it out for yourself. You know, it's it's amazing. It's not rocket science. It enlivens the senses to where they are right now. And, you know, we call that, oh, it really makes sense. Yes, you know, it makes sense. And there's a sense of relief in the body as those constraints, you know, which are imposed by outworn ways of speaking as they fall away. Because the speaking, you know, is how thinking works. So we need to find new, we need to speak in new frameworks in order to usher that possibility into emergence. You know, words are very important. What words do we use? Iron Age language, Iron Age language from India, or are we are trying, you know, to um, translate it into the manakala of the place where we live and of the time we live without losing the roots, of course, you know. But we need both. We need an anchor and we need something to float in the sea of the present. If you're just having an anchor in the past, you're just going to drown because the waters are rising. Things have changed. And we need to float with that. And it simply starts, you know, by recalling and rerouting human awareness in the larger ecology of where we live. No longer, you know, being stuck in the hall of mirrors of our own science, you know, the writing, the internet, artificial intelligence, they all have something really good to contribute. But there is much more than that. They need to be grounded in the biosphere, where they have emerged out. They need to be grounded in there and they need to show some humility, you know, about where they come from, where they eat, where they breathe where they live, where they get clothes from, all of these things, it needs to be honored and respected, needs to be remembered. And only then, you know, will the abstract intellect find its real value if it serves. So it's not a going back into the jungle or anywhere because it's impossible, but it's a coming full circle not stopping here, but, you know, bringing it all together. That's what we need to do. And it's not an intellectual undertaking. It's, it's an attunement process. And these bodies are here for that. They are plugins. But they need to be handled in a different way. And number one is to have the appropriate framework because how we are looking at something determines what we see. If we look in the old ways, we just see the same thing again and again. So apprenticing ourselves to the particular place where we live. And as the compassion deepens, you know, for the land and for what's going on out there. more and more depths of experience comes online. And as we are entering you know, our present sense experience really with dedication and with intention, emergence becomes perceived much more easily, not through the intellect, but the body as an organ of listening is the plug-in, is the connection. You know, we can't live in heady solutions like Elon Musk speaking about going and terraforming Mars. I mean, how many people can go there? 
It takes about three years, you know, to co go and come back. It's it's a ridiculous thing, you know. It's not a solution. It's like maybe, you know, some interesting uh, pastime, you know, but it's not a solution. It's a distraction from what's really happening. And uh, I think that's what I like to uh, make available for people, you know, uh, a meeting place, virtual and in person, you know, where we can just open up what we already have got, you know, since billions of years and put it into the right framework so that it can all make sense again. You know, it starts to make sense again what is happening. And we are starting to attune and because of the attunement solutions become available but no final solutions but one step at a time how we live in the place where we live and you know that's maybe not particularly um, exciting you know for people who are constantly on the internet and no longer used, you know, to really connect with the environment. But we can train ourselves to get back to that capacity. It's not rocket science. And without further ado, let us just uh, come to the meditation part of our meeting. We have another about 40 minutes time for that. So please find a posture which works for you. So it's a simple restoring ourselves to that which we already are. We are already part of planet Earth and we are inside of it, but we've forgotten it. And you just hear it one time or read it one time is better than nothing, but it needs a lot of practice to break down the old paradigms. But it can be done and it's done by many people around the planet in those pockets of sanity and this being just one. Because solutions from a disconnected place do not gain traction. They're just a repetition of the same thing. And then, you know, the way we respond to the crisis is simply a part of the crisis. And we don't want to fall for that. We don't have time for that. So and for this practice, you don't need to work hard, but a, a, a consistency is necessary, you know. A consistency and an intention. It's like micro adjustments. It's no grand schemes or any of that nature. Just becoming aware of the breath taking you deeper into the body. And allowing your nervous system to guide you Sensing the gravity and dropping any 
straining any stress, allowing that to just flow down into the soil below where you are sitting right now. Any doubt? And just trusting your body. Your body knows what to do. These bodies have been developed over billions of years since this planet started to form. And the intelligence has been passed on to us. And it knows what to do. With the out press, you could send down some roots into the soil below you, into the microbial root system, the mycelium, the richness of the soil, which holds us. With the in-breath, you're becoming aware of the stability and the vastness of the planet. Our ancestry, right below us, human, animal, plant, mineral, all of those ancestors, all holding us up as we are doing this work because it's our turn now, because we are up here breathing and walking around. So notice that you have arms and legs. And the body, a mammalian body. A biocomputer, we can say. Very sophisticated. And there are many systems in our bodies working for us. The respiratory system, the breathing, the digestive system, the circulatory system, the bloodstream being pumped by the heart through the body. The nervous system, which allows us to sense, sense the gravity, sense the weight. The fluid system keeps our bodies moist, over 70% consisting of water. The skeletal system 
which holds us up, the bones, earth element. And the endocrine system, the hormonal system. They all try to find coherence and harmony with each other. So honoring the intelligence of these systems, like an orchestra. And those are just the systems in the body, but there's much vaster systems working together in this self-organizing planet, our home planet, the Earth. In a similar way, but much, much faster. And then leaning into that. Just becoming more precise. Bring awareness to our sensorial experience rather than being caught up in the head, thinking about what's behind, what's hidden. You know, our forebears have been living for millions of years without any or very, very tiny amount of technology, some you know, stones and sticks. These bodies have a lot of capacity for knowing. And we need to wake it up again. Because it's there. It's in our DNA. We are all indigenous to this planet. We've been living much, much longer, you know, as a species in deep relationship with the biosphere than not. We've just, you know, came out of that maybe, you know, since uh, the Middle Ages more, since, you know, there was... phonetic writing, and all of those things, you know, which were supporting the abstract thinking, which is not bad, but it needs to be balanced and it needs to be grounded. So just coming full circle as we are recognizing that we have forgotten something which is vital for survival, we just going to keep on going, you know, going full circle and awakening that again. And we have still people living today, in particular indigenous people, who can teach us that. And, you know, what I share with you here in these meditations, it's something I have uh, studied, you know. And It's available, it's out there, it's not hidden. So now let's uh, connect to the broader systems. You know, bring up uh, a place you love, maybe, you know, allow yourself to be surprised. Maybe it's the place where you were born or any other place, just see what comes, wants to come up, a place you love. And see what emerges. And you know, sensing the love you have for that place.
You don't need to put words to it. Just sensing it in the heart, the connection, and also the love the place has for you. And then bring that place really close as a resource. And that's a way of communication, you know, between a place and the human organism. <clears throat> a recognition. And uh, a few sessions ago, I've been speaking about the uh, plug-in or the seat spot practice. And, you know, what I do notice when I do this practice where I'm going to a certain clearing on a loop trail very close to my house, I really feel I have developed a relationship with that place. I'm sitting there on a rock. And, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I don't have enough time to go over there to sit down. But I feel like really pulled. I need to go. And I really also recognize, you know, that the place recognizes me in some way. And that's really quite awesome. Even it's very, very subtle at the same time. And I really can't describe what I experience, but I know I do experience it. And just important, you know, not to speak to people about this who so doubt who think it's all you know woo woo or how some people uh, have no faith in the capacities which are there at least for now so it's important you know not share it with people who might make fun of you just share it with the right people for now And, you know, sensing into the resonance between the place and the body. And, you know, the, the intellect doesn't need to comment on it, comment on it. But just let the experience, the sense experience, speak for itself. And then we could bring up uh, connecting to a body of water we love and see what comes. And feel your love for that water body. And see if you can feel that water body's love for you, even a little. If you can feel the embrace,
So this body is an organ of listening. And it has the capacity to listen to a language of communication which doesn't necessarily have words. There are many, many ways of speaking. And, you know, the human way is one way. Birds speak, the trees speak as they move. Animals speak, way, the whales in the depths of the ocean. There's so many different kinds of language. And we need to listen. And expanding perception, stepping out of the hall of mirrors into the biosphere, in particular the ecology where we live. And you know, see what happens if we attune ourselves in this way, see the response, what is coming back. And then you could bring up a plant being which you love, a tree or a bush or any plant being inside or outside where you live. Maybe you have a seed spot in your garden or in your yard or in a nearby park, a particular spot you visit regularly and develop a relationship with. Maybe bring an offering from time to time. Doesn't need to be anything grand, just a little bit of water or whatever you would like to bring there. See if you can sense your love for the being, the plant being, and also the love of the plant being for you. A mighty tree or a small little plant, or a patch in the forest, or your seed spot.
And, you know, I see uh, with this practice, notice if it does make sense. Is there a uh, dropping in? An enlivening of the senses as you know the body feels that release of being out of the constraint imposed by outworn ways of speaking. Because the you know the framework from which we are coming determines what we can experience. If we say this is impossible, it's not going to become available. If we say this is what's possible, we can connect. It's a simple as not stopping and keep on moving, you know, coming full circle. We are not going back, but we are going forward, becoming full circle by integrating new and ancient ways of being. Because that's what we need. We can't go to Mars, 8 billion people, that doesn't work. That's ridiculous. We rather need to come down to the ground where we are right now. And then notice if there's a coherence. If you can really touch into the flow of life. There's a sense of non-separation. And, you know, sensing into the care you might feel, and that urge to evolve. that we are belonging to this huge network, this vast network. And we are fully networked organisms. We couldn't exist a moment without all of these connections. It's like waking up into that truth. You know, and through that waking up to the field, we are able to access the intelligence of this vast field of life. And then we can ground, you know, our abstract thinking and the internet, artificial intelligence, whatever, you know, we have invented, it needs to be grounded inside of that vast field of intelligence. And then it will be useful. And, you know, yielding into that 
interbeing nature of our own bodies as plugins into that vast field of intelligence. And noticing what's changing in you as you are experiencing that. So, you know, being part of this updating process of our species. As this information, you know, becomes conscious for us now at this time where the biosphere is really pressing us for that. To allowing that information become conscious on this threshold, again on a threshold. Our species has been going through many thresholds before, and so are so have gone the other species. This is just how evolution works. And so sensing the willingness, you know, of supporting that process, being part of that, opening the door to that, the doors of our hearts and minds, and inviting that information to change us and serving it by the way how we show up in the world according to our skills, according to the medicines, we can bring and you know to build on that what we have received from our ancestors and hand it over to future generations. And fear and doubt are part of that process, most likely for all of us. And that's okay. Because we are not made to do this alone. We need each other for, you know, safety and for action and for practicing. And just recognizing, you know, that you already have come here, you're already on it, you're already in it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have shown up here today at the earthworm practice for the Anthropocene. We can add something small to what we have received from our ancestors. And then just sensing into what calls you.
and inviting the blessings of our ancestors and the blessings of future generations to be with us, showering down on us from all sides, As we are leaving behind old outworn narratives. And you know, clearing the space for living in a much bigger world. And you're stepping out from this self-referencing into a recognition and respect for the modern human world as the ground from where we come and to which we will return. and caring for that. Turning towards that. And, you know, before we come to the end of the sit today, I'd like to read a quote from the Tao Te Ching, the translation by Stephen Mitchell. And it says this, The Tao is great. The universe is great. Earth is great. The human is great. These are the four great powers. The human follows the earth. Earth follows the universe. The universe follows the Tao. The Tao follows only itself. The human follows the earth. Earth follows the universe. The universe follows the Tao. The Tao follows only itself. We need to learn to follow the earth again because we can't win by not doing it. That's really clear. <laughs> <laughs> 